Booleans are one of the primary ways to do hard surface modeling in Blender, yet every single day I see people using them inefficiently or even incorrectly. Thing is, I know how frustrating this is because I used to do the same type of stuff myself. So in this video, we're gonna talk all about Booleans. Let's go. The first thing you need to understand is that we have three, well, technically four types of Booleans that we use. Difference, Union, Intersect, and Slice. Now, a lot of you who watch this channel probably already know the differences, but do you really? I'm gonna show you some cool hacks and tricks. Put simply, Difference Booleans cut a piece out of the mesh, Union Booleans fuse them together, and Intersect Booleans take the shared space between the two objects, kinda like the middle of a Venn diagram. Slice isn't a default operation in the Boolean modifier because it's technically two types of booleans. If you use something like HardOps or the bool tool add-on, basically these tools do the slice operations automatically. All a slice really is, is a difference boolean ran on one object and an intersect boolean ran on a duplicate of the same object, which gives you the slice effects. Now booleans are cool for all sorts of different things. If you've seen any of our previous tutorials, you'll know how efficient Booleans can be. If you're still kind of new to this stuff or just want a fun project to work on, we do have a free hard surface modeling jumpstart course over on our website. It has over 25,000 students and plenty of people love it. So I'll link that in the description. The nice thing about Booleans is their non-destructive nature. You see, as long as you don't apply your Boolean operations, you can easily move them all around your mesh with ease. Just select your cutter object and you can move it around at any time. The caveat here is that in edit mode, you can't access that geometry from the Boolean. You'll see here, for example, if I wanted to select the edges from this Boolean to run a bevel or something, I can't exactly do that. You could of course bevel the cutter in the opposite direction by flipping the normal, but I think you get the point. So if you ever need access to the geometry, you'll need to apply your Boolean operation. Usually what I do is I just make multiple Blender saves throughout my projects every few minutes. So that way, if I lock in a change by accident and I need to go back, I can just snatch an old Blender file. It doesn't take up much space on my PC and avoids the anxiety of making an irreversible decision. Now let's discuss a Boolean topology. Some of what I'm about to cover, I'll be taking from my previous video on understanding topology in five minutes. So if you haven't seen that video, take the five minutes to sit and watch it. It's gonna give you a ton of aha moments, so that way when you run into certain shading issues, you'll know how to fix them. Speaking of shading issues, Booleans are notorious for causing this. This is actually a good use case for a CAD-based software because shading issues like this don't occur. It's all vector-based. However, in polygon-based 3D modeling software, this is something that's unavoidable. But don't let this scare you away you just need to understand why it happens and how to fix it. I've used all sorts of CAD software, and while they're great, I still absolutely prefer Blender because of the tremendous other upsides it has for my workflow. So if you're running Booleans on flat surfaces, you're generally gonna be completely fine. Again, watch my last video and you'll understand why. However, on curved surfaces, this will cause the polygons around where we ran the Boolean to become bent. And again, that last video explains in detail what happens when you bend topology it usually causes a big mess. So usually, if you want to clean shading after running your booleans, you're going to need to either completely retopologize so the polygons aren't bent, or you can do what I prefer and simply isolate the shading so it isn't as noticeable. However, keep in mind that depending on your pipeline, you may indeed need to retopologize anyways, so consider what your end goal is. For game assets, concept art, and general modeling, which is what I do most of the time, you can simply isolate the shading without retopologizing. Easy. The trick to doing this is to make the polygons that you're bending much smaller. Just to quickly show you what I mean, take this face as an example, now bend it by moving a vertex. Again, my last video discusses this concept more in depth. You're gonna see that by bending this vertex, we have a nasty shading error. But what happens if I subdivide this face a few times and then bend one of the new faces? Now the shading problem is significantly less noticeable 
which is exactly what I was trying to achieve. A similar effect can be accomplished on the cylinder, for example. Instead of having the shading error from the Boolean ran up this entire face, I can simply subdivide the cylinder so that way when I run the Boolean, now the bent faces are much, much smaller. Pretty cool, huh? If you can keep these basic topics in mind when you're modeling, you'll never run into shading issues ever again. However, let me be clear, Shading issues are not the same as artifacts. Artifacts are those weird little black splotches that you get as a result of overlapping geometry. If your geometry is overlapping, then make sure you fix it. One common way overlaps occur is when you're running a bevel modifier. In this case, either slide away the overlap vertices, make the bevel modifier smaller, use the offset cut feature with the mesh machine add-on, or simply use a bevel shader. I find the bevel shader to be the most practical because it avoids most of those headaches with overlaps. So that's it. That's basically everything you need to know about booleans in a few short minutes. Most videos you watch, including mine, don't get down to the nitty gritty details like I have here, so hopefully this made more intuitive sense. If you wanna get started with hard surface modeling using our basic Blender workflow, then like I said, check out our free hard surface modeling jumpstart course over on blenderbros.com slash jumpstart. You'll get a ton of value out of that course and will feel much more comfortable with the tools in Blender. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.